Good evening and welcome back to the Big Four Sports Podcast. Happy Hump Day, Happy Wednesday, you already know. Uh, the Red Sox season is sadly over, um, but I think this Red Sox season was a massive success, massive step in the right direction, whatever you want to call it. I don't care if they will have a losing record. I don't care if they finish last in the AL East. I don't care if they finish. I don't care if they didn't make the playoffs. I don't care about that. The fact that we fired Heim Bloom and the fact that the Red Sox did better than last year with a way worse roster. Thanks, Heim Bloom. But, uh, yeah, we lost Evaldi. We lost Bogarts to free agency. We lost so much of our key assets, and yet this Red Sox team was still, like, pounding teams at times. You know, at, there was, like, times where, like, this team would be cold for a month and we'd, like, look abysmal to watch. But then, whenever the Red Sox were hot, they were the funnest team to watch. I think anybody will agree with me on that. But aside from like maybe two other teams, the Red Sox were a very, very fun team to watch. And uh, I'm going to look at two drawbacks real quick to this team. I just said number one, which was when this team was cold. Number two is the starting pitching. The Red Sox had absolutely no starting pitching, like at all. That's why I think the Red Sox should have uh, went out and go got like Lucas Giolito. Thanks, Heim Bloom, for not doing that. But uh, yeah, this is just uh, yeah. Uh, the fact that we fired Heim Bloom just at this point give all the young guys like everyday playing time. Give Willier Brayu everyday playing time. Give um, Amanuel Valdez everyday playing time. Give Sedan Rafaela everyday playing time. Let the young guys go. Let the young guys show themselves. Let the young guys get at bats to help with their development, and let's just look to next year. Because next year we're going we're gonna to have all new leadership. We're going to have a completely new chief baseball of operations, or GM. They just have all these fancy names for it. And, uh, yeah. So, yes, Red Sox season. A, this season was a massive success. I loved watching the Red Sox this year. I'm excited for next year. Hopefully we do something in free agency. Like, hopefully we can pick up, like, a Marcus Stroman, maybe. Like, who knows? Okay, but anyways, um, we're going to get to NFL Week 4 picks. Oh, yeah, um, next week's episode, we'll be predicting the NHL season. Because, uh, you know, i got to predict every single season like that happens for the, all the big four sports. I haven't talked about hockey or basketball in a long time. Well, granted, they've, they've been in the offseason. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, NBA news, Damian Lillard has been traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, I said that correctly. Damian Lillard has been traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, hold on. Um, all right. So we're gonna look at this real quick. I just was doing some research for my picks, and uh, let's just, um, hold on. There it is. Damian Lillard. Blazers trading Damian Lillard to the box in a three team deal. Oh, oh wait, I don't even know it was a three team deal. It's loading. Alright, let's see here. We got. The Portland Trail Blazers are trading guard Damian Lillard to play alongside Giannis Antetokounmpo with the Milwaukee Bucks. That is going to be, like, wicked scary. Like, I'm going to be honest, though. The Portland Trail Blazers... Dude, the the Bucks are actually going to be scary, though. Like, if they make it to the playoffs, which they are going to, which they are going to do, I don't want to run into them. Okay, so here's the deal right here. The Trail Blazers... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Portland Trailblazers are going to receive Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, and I don't know how you say his name. For Milwaukee's 2029 unprotected first rounder and an unprotected Milwaukee swap rights in 2028 and 2030, sources told. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, the, the Suns will receive Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nassar Little, and, and Keon Johnson. Who? So, yeah. That's a very... That's wicked interesting. I just wanted to... Show that so. All right, let's go. Uh, let's we're gonna do week four picks. Oh uh, yes, like I said, next week we're gonna be predicting the NHL season. So yeah, let's get let's get right into it. Uh, yesterday, 
dude, finally I had a good week of picks. I went 10-6 and six last week, which is great stuff. And now, so hold on, quick math here. So, 15, so 15 plus 10 is 25, and then 17 plus 6 is 23. So I'm 25 and 23 in the year. That's still wicked bad, but it's fine. Hold on, I still feel like I didn't. Okay, either way. So my overall record this year, if I'm correct, is 25 and 23. Hold on, 15. So I was 15 and 17 last week. And hold on. Yeah, yeah, I'm twenty five and twenty three. That doesn't okay, let's 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 keep this up. I finally had a good week. Uh looking at um oh yeah, wait, I we gotta talk about the Pats game. Oh shoot. Okay, so just looking at all the games last week, uh forty nine Giants, I got that one right. I didn't get the Falcons pick right. I didn't get the Vikings pick right. I didn't get the Saints pick right. I didn't get the Jags pick right. I got the Dolphins, which put up 70, by the way. Dude, that is ridiculous. I mean, the, the Dolphins look incredibly good. They've been steamrolling teams recently. Um, tight, uh, Browns pick, I got that right. I got the Bills right. I got the Colts wrong. I got the Pats right, the Seahawks right, the Chiefs right. I got that pick wrong. Cowboys, what the hell happened? Uh, I got the Steelers. I got the... Eagles, and I got the Bengals. Okay, nice. Uh, so let's look at the Pats game real quick. 15-10. Uh, to 10. It was a 15-10 win. Again, it was it was a very sloppy game. Granted, it was being played in, like, just, like, heavy downpour the whole time. Hell, one guy, um, one, one, one Jets fan, he was yelling a bit too hard at Zach Wilson. He lost his fake tooth. Yes, I'm serious when I say that. If you watch the CBS broadcast, they... They showed that. Okay, so looking at the game leaders here, Mac Jones, 15 of 29, 201, and one touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, 16 carries for 80 yards. He's been just kind of outplaying, guys. Pharaoh Brown, two receptions for 71 yards and a touchdown. That tu that was the oh, that was the lone Pats touchdown, I think. Zach Wilson, 18 of 36 for 157 yards. Dalvin Cook, eight carries for 18 yards. And then Garrett Wilson, five receptions for 48 yards. All right, looking at the Pats, though, I mean, it wasn't all that bad. Like, Zeke Elliott's been just outplaying Ramondre Stevenson. Um, Actually, hold on, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. I got to go to the – I'll just – I'll be right back part out of when I was gone. But, um, okay. So, let's look at let's look at it more again. Ramondre Stevenson, 15 carries for 59 yards. Zeke Elliott's just been outplaying. He's been out-snapping and outplaying. Ramondre Stevenson. So if you have him, him him in fantasy, he may not be a good option. Demario Douglas, one recept, one, uh, one carry for five yards. Mac Jones took off for for fourteen yards. Looking at receiving, Pharaoh Brown. I didn't even know his name until now. Two receptions for seventy one yards and a touchdown. Uh, Kendrick Bourne, four receptions for forty six yards. Devontae Parker, two receptions for nineteen yards. Mike Isicki, one reception for eighteen yards. Uh, Hunter Henry had two receptions for 17 yards, and that was really it. Okay. Looking on defense, I mean, there was not much to speak of. Matthew Judon had uh, two sacks. One of one that one uh, one of those sacks was a safety, which you love to see. Uh, Christian Barmore had a sack. Yeah, that was really it. I mean, there wasn't like much other other to see. Chad Ryland was actually pretty good in this game. Just he had to kick under the severe weather, so. All right, looking at the Jets, though, I mean, Zach Wilson, 18 to 36, 50% completion percentage for 157 yards. Brees Hall, 12 receptions for, for 18 yards. I mean, 12 carries for 18 yards. Dalvin Koke, eight carries for 18 yards. That was really a lot to speak of on the rushing side. The receiving side, the Jets receivers did nothing. Holy crap. Garrett Wilson, five receptions for 48 yards. Alan Lazard, three receptions for 39. Tyler Conklin had, thir uh, had three receptions for 26 yards. And looking on defense, Jordan White had had a hell of a game. Nine tackles, that's pretty good. Yeah, the Jets did not get home, like, once. And uh, no interceptions to speak of, so Mac Jones playing mistake-free football. As I saw the stats. Okay, let's get into week four here. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see. All right, week four. If, it'll, if it will decide to load. Okay, at first, we got the Packers against the Lions. Look, okay, the Packers, great comeback win. Great comeback win. That was a great comeback win against the Saints. But the Lions, dog, the Lions have just looked unstoppable. Putting up uh, 21, getting the win against the Chiefs. Putting up 31, despite losing it, which is sad. And then putting up 20 against the Falcons. And the Falcons' defense has been wicked good this year. So, who am I picking? I'm going to pick the Lions this year. I mean, this time. The Lions, I mean, come on. The Lions have just been such a good team this year, which sounds so weird to say. But it's true, though. The Lions have actually been pretty good. All right, I'm picking the Lions over the Chiefs. I mean, the Packers, sorry. All right, up next we have the Falcons at the Jags. This game is is being played in London. Uh, it'll be on at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, yeah, Eastern Time, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Jags getting blown the hell out by the by the Texans, and then the Falcons being, and then the Falcons losing to the, to the, to the Lions. Both teams looking to bounce back, and I'm going to pick the Jags even though they lost to the Texans. The Falcons looked miserable. At least the Jags didn't look as bad. All right, up next we have the Rams at the Colts. Give me the Colts. This is, this is probably one of the easiest picks of the week. Honestly, the Colts have looked wicked surprised. They've actually looked really good. They were able to beat the Ravens with Gardner, with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. We don't know what's happening with Anthony Richardson right now, but I'm, I'm sure more will come out later. All right, up next we have the Ravens at the Browns. Honestly, you give me the Browns. The Browns just decimated the Titans. I thought this game was going to be 14-10. to And the Ravens just lost to Gardner Minshew. So, yeah, um... This is kind of a no-brainer. The the Browns got the whole got uh got the home crowd behind them, so I'm gonna take the Browns this week. All right, next up, Vikings and Panthers. Nobody knows what the heck is happening to Bryce Young. Nobody knows if he's even gonna play. So if he plays or not, I still think the Vikings will get a win here. This is two zero and three teams. Uh, the Panthers did actually look pretty good last week, so I'm, I'm, uh, this game is going to be really close, but I don't think, I don't think Bryce Young, it, hold on, I'm just going to look that up on my phone real quick. Okay, he practiced it. He practiced like at the full, like at the fullest on uh, today. Actually, this is tough. Honestly, actually, you know what? Give me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the Vikings. I'm gonna take the Vikings. Why not? Whether Bryce Young plays or not, this game is gonna be like a three. This is gonna be like a three. This is gonna be a field goal game. Is what I'm telling you. All right, I'm next to the Bengals and the Titans. The Bengals, man, they finally get the win against the Rams. It was not pretty, but the Bengals got it done. And the Titans, who were just coming off getting absolutely decimated, and the Bengals clearly having the advantage here. I'm going to take the Bengals, of course. All right, up next we have the Bucks against the Saints. Uh, the, the Saints, they blew that lead to the um, to the Packers, and that was not good, like at all. How do you like the Saints? How do you blow that lead, bro? And Derek Carr is is injured. I don't think he's returning this week, so I am gonna pick the Bucks actually for this one. I know the Bucks didn't play good against the Eagles, but I still I still have faith that the fact that the Dolph that the that the um that the Bucks will that the Saints will lose this game. I mean the that the that, that the Bucks will win it. And I again I know they didn't play good, but. The Dolphins at the Bills. Dude, this is gonna be this is a game of the week candidate, but I'm picking the Dolphins. I don't care what you delusional Bills fans say. Guys aren't you guys aren't winning the Super Bowl, that's all I'm gonna say. But but yeah, like in all seriousness though, 
This game is going to be a one-score game. This is going to be an amazing game to watch. This is going to be an amazing game in every way possible. The Dolphins put up 70 against the Broncos, and the Bills are just... Like, yeah, they put up 37 against the, the uh, against the Commanders. That's that, That's no 70, but that is still impressive. So, yes, I am indeed going to pick the Dolphins for this one. I think the Dolphins have just been absolutely steamrolling teams. And, yeah, that le- that leads me towards the Dolphins' side. All right, Broncos-Bears. You know what? Let's do the Immaculate Grid. Actually, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do the Immaculate Grid right now. Hold on. All right, hold on. I'm going to see here. Sorry, guys. I got to. Screw around with this real quick. Okay, let's get this going. So, all right, um, we got the Dolphins, Dolphins, Ravens, Texans, and U Miami for for one side. Commanders, Ravens, and Texans, and U Miami, and then Giants, Ravens, Texans, and U Miami. Okay. We're going to go for a bit more of a rarity score. This one is actually wicked easy. I just realized that. I just thought of that. Uh, let's start it off in the top right corner. I mean the top left corner, sorry. With uh, Ravens, Dolphins. That's going to be Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. Oh, that's being used a lot, actually. Okay. Uh, Dolphins, Texan. Let's go down the line. Will Fuller. Let's go. All right. Dolphins and U Miami. Let's go Lamar Miller. We're going for a rarity score here. So this is I'm going with all the all the rare players. Let's go Lamar Miller. Okay. Let's go with Ravens and Commanders. Let's go Morgan Moss. Again, go. We're just, oh, come on, guys. Really? Bro, where is his name? Oh, wait. Commanders in New Miami, Santana Moss. All right, let's go with um, Giants in New Miami. Jeremy Shockley. I think that's how you say his name. Yep, Shockey. I think. Okay, he's being used a lot. That probably wasn't that, wasn't that good. Giants Texans. Oh, David Carr. Please be it. Yep. This isn't that good of a rarity score. Oh wait. Ravens and uh what's his name? What Ravens Giants, that's JPP. Jason Pierre Paul. Let's go. Jason Pierre Paul. Alright. Uh Ravens Commanders. Um actually okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna keep thinking about Ravens Commanders. Uh t- oh Texans Commanders, Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke, yes sir. Alright, that's a good rarity score. Who the heck played for the Ravens and the Commanders? Both. I know people are screaming at me like, do this name, do that name, do this name, do that name. Like, I guarantee it. Um, I'm just trying to think real quick, bro, like, dude, who, bro? Oh, 
Oh my god, this is actually tough. Hold on. Um. Hold on, I'm gonna... Oh, oh. Oh, 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 you stupid people. Kobe Jones. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That was correct, right? Hold on. Wait, why did... Wait, what? I'm, I'm confused, dog. Okay, we're just gonna say we got it. Can I just... Hold on, I wanna check my knowledge. Okay. Did... Jacoby Jones play for both the Yeah, yeah, he he on yeah yeah he did he did okay he did he did okay sorry that sorry that took forever but he did indeed play for the houston texans i mean the not the, not the texans the commanders and the ravens both so that was indeed correct all right let's go let's get back to picks um but yes uh broncos win it i guess sure whatever this 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 game is gonna suck right here. Broncos Bears two zero and three teams that have been absolutely spanked the first two weeks. Yeah, give give me the Broncos sadly. Up next we got the Commanders and the Eagles, bro. Give me the Eagles. The Commanders just got absolutely smacked against the Bills while the Eagles just kept dominating. So yeah, up next Steelers Texans. I'm gonna take the Steelers with this one. Um, the Texans, I know they came off a dominating win against the Jags, but the Steelers. I mean, they're they're still the Steelers. The Steelers will be TJ Watt will, will be able to get by the horrible O line that is the Houston Texans. So yeah, I'm gonna pick the Steelers. Up next we have the Raiders at the Chargers. I'm gonna take the Chargers here. I have way more faith in the Chargers while the Raiders have got spanked on um on Sunday night football. I know I know the score said 23-18, but it was 23-7 with like 5 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Those last couple of points was garbage time points. So yes, give me the give me the Chargers here. Up next we have the Cardinals versus the 49ers. The, I should have I should have done the immaculate grid instead of talking about this game. But actually no. The Cardinals have actually been playing good football. I don't know where this came from or who came up with this idea. It's probably it probably has to do with Jonathan Gannon, honestly. Like the Cardinals just just whooped the Cowboys and it wasn't even close. So yeah, can, I'm gonna take the 49ers still. The 49ers have been steamrolling teams. The Cardinals have been playing good football, but the 49ers have just been playing better football. So yes, give me give me that. Uh, give me the 49ers. Following that, you got the Pats and the Cowboys. Dude, give me the Pats, honestly. If the Cowboys are going to lose to the, to the like, Cardinals, like, come on, dude. I'm going to take the Pats on this one. I think Mac Jones will be able to find a way to, to, um, to beat the Cowboys defense. And I think that, um, I think the Pats defense will be able to slow down C.D. Lamb. All right, up next, Chiefs, Jets. Uh, give me the Chiefs. The Jets look horrible with Zach Wilson. I mean, you and me, are, you and me both already know how this game's gonna end out. Mahomes is gonna dominate. Well, Mahomes isn't the Mahomes. I don't think is really gonna dominate because that Jets defense is really good. But the Jets offense won't be able to do anything. So, following that, Monday Night Football: Seahawks Giants. Finally, we don't have a Monday Night doubleheader. Seahawks though, the Giants have looked horrible. They barely beat the Cardinals, lost 40 to nothing in week one. You and me both know how that turned out. And, uh, yeah, just uh, got steamrolled by the by the 49ers. So, yeah, give me the Seahawks for this one. That will do it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you agree with my picks, if you agree or disagree, come tell me. Uh, you can you can go check out my Instagram at the Big Four Sports Podcast.
Yeah, it, it is. It is. It's just the Big Four Sports Podcast, no uppercase, and the letter four. I'm um, yeah, the number four. Nick, come on. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it. I uh, hope you guys hope you guys enjoyed this one. Again, you can go check out my Instagram, and that will do it. All right, deuces, peace, whatever you want to say it.